30, it's barely dark. I mean, I'm not sure how long it's been dark, but it's, it ain't been that long. Amen. I want you to turn, if you've got a Bible, I want you to read this with me because this might be the highlight of the whole deal. Is if you would just read this. I want you to turn to 1 Peter. That'll be back there toward the end of the book. 1 Peter chapter 2. I want you to turn there with me. I want you to read this with me. It's good to have everybody tonight. And, and uh, Brother from Oklahoma, a young preacher named Blake Duke preached for us today. And he preached good on the Holy Ghost for our generation. But what he said to begin with, he said, he said he knew that God would be faithful. He knew that. But he said what the question was is, would we be faithful? Amen. And uh, I'd like to be found faithful, wouldn't you? All right. I want you to look with me. And then I, I want you to read just... Just verse 7, and I want, I want you to repeat this section with me, and I'm going to back up and, and uh, preach a little bit uh, from this, but I, I want you to read it with me. First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 7, okay? Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. All right? That's, that's, the, that's what I want, I want you to hang your hat on there tonight. Uh, unto, he, unto you, therefore, that believe. How many, how, many have a, how many do we have here that fit that category tonight? How many believe? Unto you, therefore, that believe. He is precious. All right, I want you. To, I want. I want you to take those three words right there. I want. I want you to say them with me now. Now, look. I'm not trying to work you into nothing. I'm just. I just want you. I'm gonna say it just a, a couple of times. All right. You ready? He is precious. He is precious. He is. Precious. Now, <clears throat> this scripture comparing Jesus to a chief cornerstone, and I, I didn't really take the time, didn't really get the time today to look at this thoroughly up, but I, I think I've read it enough, and I think I understand enough to know. But this word, precious, amen, is a, a word that means um, that he is uh, the only one for a certain situation that makes him precious amen you've heard the term used precious stones they're very rare they're hard to find that makes them expensive huh you can't hardly sell creek rocks but diamonds you probably could huh but, brother, I feel a Holy Ghost in my soul tonight to tell you he is the most precious because he is the one and only in a lot of ways in our life. Now, in this scripture right here, it's comparing Jesus to that, that stone that the builders rejected. And here's the thing about that stone that the builders rejected. It was the only stone to finish the, the job. If I understand right, that those those stone structures, and you look in, in Israel, in, in, in Jerusalem today, there's not a lot of forest to be cut down. Those buildings 
the reason they glisten in the sunlight. They're made a lot out of that white stone and that it just the light sun shines on that and the radiance of that. But they would build those buildings out of that stone, and I don't know if I understand all about it. But I know that there was one crowning stone it took to complete the building, to unify the building, to uh, uh, to bring it to a completion. The building was not done until that cornerstone was placed in. He's not only the foundation of the building, he is that precious cornerstone of the building. Now, brother and sister, we're living in a world that is trying their best, amen, to make Christ equal with other gods, amen, equal with other ways of salvation. But, when, brother, when it comes to old-time religion, there is only one way to the pearly gate. Amen. Now, if you're lost tonight and you're needing a way, there is only one way, and He is precious. Praise God. Jesus said, I am the way. Oh, hallelujah. For whatever it is you're needing in this house tonight. Now, come on now. Amen. You know I'm not going to preach all night. Uh, amen. But I want us, before we leave here, I want us to be saying from the depths of our heart, uh, He is Precious, praise God. Uh, amen. What makes him precious? Uh, for we're not redeemed, uh, amen, with corruptible things of uh, silver and gold, uh, but we're redeemed by the precious blood, uh, amen, of the Son of God. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would say amen. Uh, amen. What does he mean to you? Uh, amen. We cannot have contempt uh, for God uh, or his house, uh, amen, or his blood, uh, amen, when we realize Amen. That He is the one and only way to heaven. Hallelujah. He is precious. But them that are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed, but ye are a chosen generation. My Lord, I want to preach to you tonight. I know it's getting late and we've, we've prayed. Amen. But I want to preach to you a little bit tonight. Amen. Uh, you know, there's so much, there's much going on in this world. Amen. And, and people getting, Brother Zane, their doctrines warped up and twisted up. But I want to tell you, if I can zero you in on one thing tonight. Amen. It'll take care of us everything else that confuses you. The Bible said that he that believeth shall not be confounded. That's what that Bible said. Amen. Uh, Paul said, I would know nothing among you. Now this seems like he's oversimplifying it. What is he, illiterate? Does he not know anything else? Uh, amen. Uh, amen. He was schooled at the feet of Gamaliel. He was a doctor of the law. Uh, amen. He could have been among the Sanhedrin. Uh, he was expert. Uh, but he said, when I put it up the side of Jesus Christ, uh, Amen. It doesn't shine at all. Uh, amen. I would know nothing more uh, than Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, amen. Help me preach a little bit. Uh, amen. I feel like telling you tonight. Uh, amen. He is precious. Uh, he is precious when I need a Lord. Uh, he's precious when I need a Savior. Uh, he's precious when I need a friend. Uh, that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, he's precious when I'm burdened down. Uh, and I need my head lifted up. Uh, he's precious uh, when I'm lost. And I need a Savior. Hallelujah. I love, I love what Peter said to Jesus. And it was a critical moment of their lives. Jesus had just preached to the Jews about the bread from heaven. And he said, Moses didn't give you that bread from heaven. He told these strict Jews. Boy, that made them so mad. They couldn't hardly stand it. Moses was their main hero. Amen. And he said, Moses didn't give you that manna from heaven. God gave you that bread. But, well, this is what really flipped him in the creek right here. He said, I 
am the bread from heaven. He said, oh, you mean, what's this man talking about? Hey, man, that he's the bread. Moses, hey, man, give us that bread and manna on the ground. But Jesus said, no, that was only typology and symbolism. I am the bread from heaven. And then he told them something that they couldn't hardly stand. He said, you've got to eat, hey, man, of my flesh. The bread is my flesh and my blood. Hey, man, you've got to drink my blood or you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And they said, what's this man mean? We got to eat his flesh and drink his blood. What he mean was, you've got to believe in me and not doubt. You've got to take me and nobody else. You've got to believe that I'm God's only begotten son and there's not any other. And brother, the Bible said that many of them went back and walked no more with him. I'll tell you what will keep you from walking with the Lord is when you don't realize how precious he is. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I was a preacher tonight. Listen to this. They turn and walk back in Jesus. And, and I believe, I, the Bible said, Brother Mike, the Bible said Jesus knew who it was that would go back. He wasn't caught off guard to that. He already knew who wasn't going to stay. But he looked at them disciples, and he said, will you go away also? That would be a good question in this house tonight. You say, you mean to tell me you know, preacher, who's going to leave? No, I'm not. I can give you a little clue. If you don't stay faithful to God and his word and his house, you're going to go back. If you don't ask the Lord to sanctify your heart and separate you completely for God's work and get the world out of your life, you're not, you're going to go back. But I don't know. I can't tell. But listen to what the Jesus said. Hey Amen. Look what Peter said to him. And I, I'm not going to take much longer. Hey Amen. But Peter looked at the Lord when he said, Peter, will ye also go away? And Peter looked at him and he said, Master, hey Amen, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. Hey Amen. Come on now. Hey Amen. I want to tell you what Peter was saying, Brother Noah. He was saying, you're too precious. Hey Amen. For me to leave. You're the one and only. You have the words of eternal life. If I want to live forever, I've got to stay close to you. If I want to live forever, amen, I've got to realize, amen, how precious Jesus is to me. Hallelujah. I wish I could preach to you. He is Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Is he to you tonight? Huh? Is he to this church tonight? Oh, help me preach. I won't preach. I'm just going to preach a minute or two more. Amen. I, I felt like giving you this. If I can get this to you, it will change your day tomorrow. Huh? I was coming through my Bible. This week, and this little clipping fell out. I shared it with you back several months ago, a year or so, ever how long it's been. I don't know if I can find it now. It's in here somewhere. But there it is. And it's, I cut it out of this magazine I was reading. It's about this astronaut, and, and uh, I used it in a, in a message before, I preached last year sometime. But in that, in that I'm gonna, I felt like saying it again tonight. But... This, this astronaut, that he had been out of space three different times in the, with the Mercury uh, space program. And, and he had got into this uh, conservation of the earth and, and, and got real big on the green bandwagon of, of preserving the water and keeping the air clean and preserving. And they asked him in an interview, why are you so uh, uh, passionate about, about saving this earth and keeping this earth preserved? And he said, well, I'm just going to tell you the truth. He said, I went to outer space three times, and there's nowhere out there that we can survive. Mother Earth, is all, we always had to come back to Earth. And when I realized there was nowhere else I could go, then I, I said, let us save 
Mother Earth. Are you listening to me? I'll tell you what would put a passion in our church right here is if we realize there's nowhere else for us to turn. There's nowhere else for us to turn. Amen. Peter said, where can we go? You've got the words of eternal life. You're precious to me. Uh, oh, somebody say amen. Uh, I'll tell you what, he's precious to me. Uh, amen. That woman broke the alabaster box. Uh, amen. Wept and, and with her, her tears uh, and washed the feet uh, of the Son of God uh, with the tears of her face uh, and took her hair. Uh, amen. Uh, and dried his feet uh, with the hair of her head uh, because he was precious. Uh, amen. Because he had forgiven her uh, of all of her sins, uh, and he was precious, uh, amen, uh, amen, is he precious to you, you've been here all night, and you've not raised a hand to praise him, I don't believe in charismatic movements, I don't believe in, in tricks and pony shows, and pulling the rabbit out of the hat. And I myself am not going to move very far till the Spirit moves me. And I may be times, amen, and I've had people in a service that was going high come over and I could tell they were concerned about me, Brother Tommy. What's the matter? You okay? Hey, and really, I, I, I was just, for some reason or another, I wasn't feeling that, that big push of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to jump too high. I'm too uncoordinated. I'll fall down and bust an ankle. Y'all have to carry me out on a stretcher. I gotta wait for the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, amen. But I'll tell you what. Uh, amen. It don't take much of the Spirit uh, for me to say thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and sing a song. Uh, amen. Unto the Lord. Uh, because He's precious. Uh, oh, so precious. Uh, amen. Somebody say amen. Uh, he's the only uh, begotten uh, Son of the Father. Uh, he has preeminence. Uh, he thought it not robbery. Uh, amen. To be equal with God. Uh, amen. Uh, what did a song of Solomon say, uh, amen, he is all uh, together lovely, uh, amen, he excels. us, uh, he's the chief uh, of 10,000, uh, and he's the chief cornerstone, uh, the only one uh, to finish the work uh, on Calvary's hill, uh, the Son of God, He's more than a spare tire. He's more than a 911 number. Huh? I was praying for the sick tonight. I felt the Lord move on me. If I heal them, will they praise me? Good question, isn't it? Huh? Is the only time we shed a tear is when we're needing healing. Or, or deliverance for one of our loved ones? Huh? Is that the only time we'll get interested in praying at all is when the bottom falls out of everything? Huh? Am I being mean here? I'm not. I'm just telling you what I felt. And I'm not saying the Lord, Lord didn't say I ain't going to heal them. He didn't. He just asked me, will, will you praise me if I heal them? Will they praise me if I heal them? Huh? Will we give him... Will we be like the one of the ten that came back and praised the Lord and was made whole? I want to tell you something. You can have contempt uh, and be indifferent toward about anything in this world and get by. But when you're indifferent and contemptible toward the blood of Jesus Christ and count it an unholy thing, uh, then, brother, you're in trouble. Are you listening to me? Amen. Come on now. The Bible said after they've known the way. Uh, amen. Come on. Uh, amen. And turn the, the Bible said there remaineth. Amen. No more sacrifice. Sacrifice for sin. If you reject the Son of God, you're a loser. Hallelujah. Because there's only one way to the Father, and it's through and by Jesus Christ. Will you stand with me tonight? God bless you. That's my sermon. That was my 45 minute sermon in 15 minutes. Praise God. I just cut out all the hallelujah, glory to God, and help me preach. And there you are. Huh? He 
When it's dark, he's the precious light. When it's stormy, he's the precious cover from a storm. When a hill is steep, amen, he's the precious comforter that walks by my side. When a fire is hot, he's the precious fourth man. Some of you's already lost interest in him. Amen. In the 15 minutes I was preaching, you've already lost interest in the Son of God. Now, you think that's a little rebuke, but it's not. It's not. I tell you, the Bible said, if we keep our mind on him, he'd keep us in perfect peace. To them that believe, say it with me, he is precious. To them that believe, he is precious. He is that rock, that final chief corner stone that makes it all work. And without it, it's it's not going to happen. That stone was carved and made. There's only one. There's only one. And what's his name? Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me just a minute.